Assalamu alaikum. Inshallah today our lecture is genovarum and blown disease. The aim of this lecture is to differentiate between physiological and the pathological virus. Pathological causes <coughs> like, like rickets, blown, skeletal dysplasia, you have to know uh, sometimes of dysplasia causing virus like achondroplasia, metaphyseal dysplasia, focal fibrocartilaginous dysplasia and others. This is Selenius curve. This is the line for the age, and this is line of the deformity. This is varus side, and this is valgus side. Newborn with maximum varus, then rectus at two, maximum valgus at three, then return to physiological valgus seven at seven, seven degree at about seven years. This curve doesn't mean that if you have outside this virus is sure pathological. This curve is an estimate relation, uh, intimate or uh, 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 estimation of the relation between age and mean tibiofemoral angle. For example, if you have a, a, a child who is two years old and he, instead of being rectus, zero degree, he is in uh, some sort of virus or severe virus or three years and still in virus this is willing to mean that he is sure for pathological uh, virus except if a trend is established this is a cornerstone keyword in our lecture you have to establish the trend is it progressive deformity or regressive so you have to establish the trend in the uh, serenius curve so he is more likely to be pathological if a progressive his mother saying to you that he is progressive your clinical exam is progressive so mostly this trend is established for progressive deformity unilateral and if bilateral there is a symmetry severe this mean the word severe mean two standard deviation shift one standard mean eight degree for example again two year should be rectus if he is 16 degree this is a severe virus two standard deviation one of one standard deviation mean eight degrees in relation to the corresponding age if he is 16 degree valgus he is severe valgus he is has severe valgus or associated with complication like limb length discrepancy uh, in torsion in towing uh, obese uh, with lateral thrust they are the mean with associated complication out out the normal selenius curve blown this is one of the rare causes this is not a common cause this uncommon gross disorder with abnormal ossification in chondral ossification in the medial part of the proximal tibia epiphysis physis metaphysis three types infantile three years adolescent ten years in between juvenile the main difference between infantile and adolescent that adolescent is male mild mild in everything infantile is severe taking female bilateral with more incidence of recurrence physial it changes progressive and severe bar formation is more frequent metaphysial it changes severe all complication is common in infantile adolescent is mild langen skilled staging system only for infantile not for adolescent this is type 1 irregularity and peaking this is type 2 depression both are common in all type of virus this is not for only not for plowman developing of a step of this is type 3 and the beginning of plowman you will be mostly in plowman disorder then type 4 epiphysis follows the metaphysis type 5 two phases one between the epiphysis and metaphysis and one between the separated part of the epiphysis then bar formation 
of course five five and six you have to elevate this please don't correct with valgus osteotomy only without elevation of this you will end up with horrible uh, x-ray post-op pathogenesis unknown but obesity increasing the stress in a genetic predisposed child could lead to uh, Hutter Volkman principle. What is Hutter Volkman principle? On the side of compression, the physis doesn't gross. On the side of the tension, the physis is growing more. But this is not an indication also for surgery. So you didn't see, you wouldn't see every patient with virus and you tell that you will correct to prevent to Hutter Volkman principle. This is uh, uh, done if he exceeds the physiological limit. So if you are still in physiological virus, Hutter Volkman principle can remote willing to occur and bone can remodel. Histopathology, a lot of histopathological changes can occur in the physis, like fissure and the cleft. The tips here is that these changes could be uh, uh, associated in the femoral head with scaphy. So you have to exclude scaphy in a patient with plowing disease, proper hip x-ray and proper examination. Natural history, physiological knee, spontaneous resolution, pathological knee, pathological virus, excessive stress, so arthritis, up to joint laxity, so uh, and uh, uh, gate, uh, lateral thrust gate and up to patellofemoral instability. Surgical anatomy. Surgical anatomy here is introduction for a big lecture which is coronal deformity or deformity detection and management. The, uh, uh, the magnitude of deformity can be detected by anatomical tibio femoral angle and mechanical axis deviation. What is this? This is the anatomical line of the tibia and the same mechanical line of the tibia, which bisects the tibia. Bisects the tibia, lying in the lateral cortex, point in the lateral cortex, point in the medial cortex. Apart from this, again, point on the lateral cortex, uh, medial cortex, lateral cortex, and bisecting midpoint here, midpoint here, and connecting the line, this is the anatomical or mechanical of the tibia, the same for the tibia. They are different for the femur. Anatomical for the femur is again bisecting the shaft of the femur. Mechanical is the center of the hip to the center of the knee, to the center of the ankle, passing through the center of the knee. Actually, could lie, uh, lie within the inner two quadrants. If this axis is shifted medially, this is virus. Mechanical axis deviation to the virus. If this angle is shifted laterally, this is mechanical axis deviation to the lateral, so it is in valgus deformed. So this is mechanical axis deviation regarding the anatomical axis, femoral tibial anatomical line, usually in normal 60 degree in valgus, if exaggerated, Valgus deformity if decrease virus deformity. Again, this is the mechanical axis from the center of the hip to the center of the ankle passing through the center of the knee. If you remember in the lecture of the tibial plateau fracture, the proximal tibia in relation to the shaft is in about three degree virus and all other angles are in the lateral except this angle, the proximal uh, medial tibial angle and neck shaft angle, all are lateral. Okay, after detection of the mechanical axis of the uh, whole lower limb, you have to write, uh, to draw the joint orientation line. This is joint orientation line for the distal femur, joint orientation line of the proximal tibia with the mechanical axis forming degree, 87, 87. This is the mechanical, 87, 87. If this angle is 80, so the decrease, 
so the tibia is going inward so it is in varus of tibial origin or increase so it is valgus in tibial origin of tibial origin again distal femur if it is decreased it is valgus will go into valgus of femoral origin it could decrease here proximal tibial angle decrease and this is increased so the genovarum is of tibial combined tibial and proximal uh, distal femoral origin everything will be corrected separate and joint orientation line is also important to detect any intra-articular abnormality for example a straight joint orientation line for the tibia if it is depressed like in tibial plateau uh, tibial blount you will elevate it to correct it again never in uh, depressed tibial plateau and blount correct by only valgus osteotomy you have to elevate the patella is in the uh, centered in the femoral sulcus so please be sure that the patella is facing forward to be centered in the clinical assessment and in the radiology to probably uh, to probe uh, to uh, to assess it properly uh, valgus or varus it will mask if not center it will could be associated with in you see internal and it is external tibial torsion and so on so you have to assess uh, to make patella facing forward in the uh, clinical and in the radiology uh, facing forward to uh, to detect your angles again examination we are dealing with the knee we are take uh, we already took uh, knee examination in detail now we are focusing on the relevant for example for the history we are taking one main complaint and asking about the three other then associated symptoms and all the uh, complaints uh, uh, to be associated with the function of the patient and degree of pain here's the main complaint if infantile tibia vara will be deformity the parents complain of the change in the deformity change in the shape of the lower limb in the late onset tibia vara they complain of pain associated with deformity starting f f uh, examination as usual with gait lateral thrust as i inform you before lateral thrust exaggerated deformity in stance phase then inspection front side back to detect genovara two horrible inaccurate tests but still needed for viva exam q angle and intercondylar distance this is the q angle uh, a geniometer centered on the center of the patella one limb along a line to the anterior superior leg spine and the other limb to the uh, along the tibial tuberosity it is about 12 degree here this is the intercondylar distance uh, patella facing forward uh, then from the adductor tubercle to adductor tubercle by the way the adductor tubercle is the first bony prominence you feel beside the patella this is a relevant actually sensitive specific test the cover up test what is cover up test now from the history from the mother onwards you uh, you hear it is progressive stationary regressive and so on so it could be a pathological you will do x-ray or no one of other criteria is cover up test you will cover this is the lower limb hole in virus here in virus this is normal and this is abnormal how i know you will cover the distal tibia with your bulb if the proximal tibia aligned in valgus with the femur this is mostly a physiological virus no need for x-ray if it is proximal tibia is in virus in relation to the femur this is mostly pathological and will need x-ray for the sake of completion to uh, uh, examination of the knee uh, uh, in a child to complete by stahiri profile here we are focusing on internal tibial torsion 
to detect if there is internal tibial torsion lying by sectioning the foot and lying by sectioning the thigh and detect the ankle this is the normal external rotation internal rotation the foot shifted inward uh, a separate lecture for pediatric examination uh, inshallah we will talk about imaging uh, AB and lateral weight bearing with patella facing forward try to make the pelvis leveled uh, with blocks patella view if you suspect patella instability and if you if you have some sort of limb length discrepancy or you will use guided growth you have to take hand and uh, or elbow x-ray to detect the skeletal maturity how many years remain for this child I can use to correct uh, deformity as you will see later actually we use uh, CT scanogram to detect all this but x-ray we used to detect the metaphysial diaphysial angle metaphysial from the flares of the metaphysis line connecting the flares of the metaphysis this is the blue one and the perpendicular to diaphysial line this is uh, the other one suppose a normal one the uh, the metaphysis is perpendicular to the diaphysis and the perpendicular to the perpendicular should be both lines overlap each other if there is an angle so you will see it open medially or lateral this is open medially so in varus deformity varus deformity uh, metaphysial diaphysial angle if less than 10 it is mostly physiologic it is if more than 16 it is mostly pathologic in between needs follow-up CT scanogram to detect malalignment test detect the center of deformity center of rotation where is the center of rotation this is in details later this is only uh, a quick review uh, detect leg length discrepancy don't uh, forget excluding scaphy CT with gun sight shot to detect miserable malalignment we will take in uh, femoral antivirgin this is for the sake only for completion MRI if you have a horrible joint depression to detect uh, its size and location treatment first you have to establish the trend is it progressive or regressive or uh, stationary if you have underlying pathology you have to manage please explain to the for example rickets you willing to correct uh, a pathological inactive or healing rickets it, it should be healed explain to the parents you have to draw selenius curve uh, to the patient uh, to the parents and uh, inform them about the normal tibiofemoral in relation to the age some parents are anxious no problem to take an x-ray and document the uh, virus deformity if you suspect any uh, metabolic disorder you can take uh, blood tests like alkaline phosphatase phosphate and calcium surgical management what is the goal restoring normal mechanical axis if it is shifted uh, inward, uh, varus, you have to be in the center. And this is also what you are seeking for observation in the conservative management. You add in surgical management, if you have a rotation, internal tibial rotation, you have to correct. If you have limb length discrepancy, you have to correct. Articular surface depression, you have to elevate. If you have a par, you have to resect. This could be done either acute, gradual, or in single or two stages indication again establish the trend this a progressive virus deformity methods we have osteotomy and guided growth this is the modern technique of management osteotomy either acute or gradual again types mostly we are used transverse simple opening which but below the tibial tuberosity below the tibial tuberosity we fix this osteotomy if a small child cast is sufficient no need for key wires i uh, personally i didn't use key wires if adolescent gradual correction with external fixator is preferred 
if you use cast only if you use cast only you will lose the reduction if internal fixation like with plates very difficult to assess the mechanical axis intraoperative you can end up with under correction and the mal union again external fixator is useful for la uh, later adjustment especially if uh, in adolescent and if you have limb length discrepancy you can correct either unilateral hybrid or irisarov in addition to osteotomy if you have the breast plateau medial plateau you have to elevate please don't do in this case only valgus osteotomy we will end on horrible x-ray uh, later you have to elevate for example by two shans uh, here then cutting and elevating it unilateral or irisar of whatever you will do gradual or acute guided growth this is the uh, modern technique now this is the eight plate flexible non-locked and with many incision it is uh, done uh, extra periosteal to avoid to avoid injury to the physis and it is near the core center of rotation center of the deformity so as you will see uh, in the deformity magnitude and the correction uh, lecture uh, you have to be near the cora to avoid translation this plate is versatile can be can be used at any age provided that there is a remaining gross remaining gross to correct the deformity and any diagnosis actually diagnosis uh, differential diagnosis of pathological cause isn't the main in the management uh, the magnitude and patient size is the main and the plane it correct can correct the sagittal and the coronal deformity also oblique deformity this is <coughs> uh, intraoperative x-ray with application of uh, blade some tips this is screws better to be uh, 4.5 milli and uh, when you do a drilling uh, around the, your guide wire just to drill the proximal portion about five millimeter don't uh, drill uh, all the lens uh, uh, just uh, not to pull out this guide wire and uh, to take a, a good purchase leave uh, let the uh, self tapping self drilling screw take his uh, way and uh, for good purchase what is the indication and contraindication for eight plate any accessible physis knee ankle elbow wrist and so on any direction of deformity frontal and sagittal bilateral multiple deformity if you imagine you do is osteotomy uh, uh, this is univarum uh, uh, we uh, we suppose that this is, uh, has established trend of progressive deformity has a virus of femoral component and tibial component so we will osteotomize here right side femoral component then tibia then fibula this is three osteotomy then another three osteotomy six osteotomies in this child and at the same time you have a modality to do just the four plates here uh, I uh, in my hand this is take one hour and this take uh, two and a half hour so ideal indication provided that you have a gross remaining if you have no gross remaining it is contraindicate or of course if you have physial bar you need close follow up every three and four uh, months to see uh, what's going on fixation removal within two years you need to remove after doing some over correction there is incidence of recurrence so please do some over correction old methods of gross modulation one of them uh, the modern one was the eight blade but there is another uh, types like uh, femister bone block or drilling the uh, whole length of the physis or using stables stables if this done uh, unilateral to correct uh, 
uh, uh, used to correct coronal deformity if bilateral for leg length. <coughs> so stables here uh, in this side to correct the valgus deformity, in this side to correct the valgus deformity, this side varus of femoral origin, varus of tibial origin. Again, this is valgus to correct the valgus, this screw for valgus, this screw for varus, and so on. This is percutaneous screw, this is, table, this is all because uh, it is obsolete or uh, out of favor nowadays because, for example, stables can uh, take uh, uh, one of the most common complications is, um, is back off this is stable and uh, here, sure, this is physis is uh, could be damaged so unpredictable growth remaining uh, you will see otherwise in, in 8 blade you didn't damage the physis I know this is a difficult uh, viva case just to try to think this is a child with a stable medially some stables medially and some stables laterally please think which stable done first and why and the other one, why it is done. Thank you.